Hello, YouTube. <laughs> Hello, Raymond. All right, I know you've been harping on me to, to fix the uh, radiator f fan on my 2005 Pontiac Vibe because it was overheating. Um, the issue was it seems to run fine when you're driving, but if you're like in stop and go traffic or park for a long time or you go somewhere and you stop and then you go somewhere and you stop, you know, to park or whatever, it tends to overheat. And the reason it was overheating was the fan itself didn't work. First thing we did was check all the fuses and stuff to make sure that it wasn't a blown fuse. Um, it wasn't. Then we actually physically checked the fan by hooking power up to it and it wouldn't spin. So I suspect the fan is bad and decided to get another fan. Now I tried to, I could have ordered like a brand new fan and you know some people sent me links for like i think it's called rock auto which has like really good prices like 50 40 to 60 dollars roughly um but i didn't want to order it so i tried to go to like um advanced auto parts and they had it for like 130 to 180 dollars advanced auto parts auto zone so locally it was like 180 bucks and i didn't want to do that so i went to the scrap yard and um got one for like i think it was like 36 dollars plus tax and they said it would work, although when I look at it, it's slightly different. I mean, it looks the same, but slightly different. The uh, the coolant cap here has a little vent hole on it. This one has a side vent that comes out. So I could have um, taken out the whole unit and replaced it with the scrap one. But I think what I'm going to try to do is keep the original as much as possible, which means I'll just be replacing the um, the fan blade itself. Now, um, I've already started to take it apart to make sure I could do it before I try to show you guys what I did. But basically, the whole, only thing holding the, the stuff together are these two little bolts. And they go on the, the side right here. It goes right here on the side, that bolt. And there's another one on this side right here. I don't know if you can see it right here. I set these down so I don't lose the bolts. But I took both of them out. But it's right here on this side. And you need like a, a 10 millimeter, you know, socket. And maybe with the extension on it to, to do that. You're also going to need a, um, well, if you're going to do what I'm going to do, you're going to need a, a cross point screwdriver because we're going to be removing the fan. You might need a, a flat tip screwdriver because there's some other things you need to release. So the first thing you need to release is um, these guys, these little clips. I think they go into the, the unit itself, to, like these things right here, to hold um, to hold the wires in place. And then this tip right here, which goes right here to the fan connection, it's got a little push down thing. I don't know if you can see what it looks like here. But basically you have to push down real hard on this side here as you pull it out. And, you know, you might, they have like a tool I think you can use for that, or you might be able to do it with a screwdriver. But you push down on this part and it lowers, see that? It lowers the... The part with the wedge there. So that's how you get that out. Once you've done that, it's pretty much disconnected. Then you just need to disconnect the um, the hose right there. And the thing sits on like a little ledge. So just be careful you don't damage the, um, the radiator fins, I guess is what they're called. I don't know. But basically, you carefully just lift this up. Because it's only, only held together by these two bolts. I'm going to go ahead and set the, the phone down because I don't want to... I accidentally damaged my um, my radiator fins just to bring this unit out and show it to you. And right, I'm carefully lifting it out. Wiggle it slightly, but not towards the front. And you can see the, the fan itself is pretty simple. It's, um, looks like this is what the unit looks like from a 2005 Pontiac Vibe. And, um... It's basically got the overflow for the radio fluid. I didn't have to drain it or anything like that. And the actual fan is held together, held on by three bolts that um, have a cross point. Let me show you once I flip it over. They have a, a cross point screw. See that? So what I'm going to do is just take my little screwdriver, unscrew all that, and do the same with this one. You know, unscrew all that, the, the, three, um, the three screws there. And then replace just the fan. Then I'm going to put the same unit back in. I probably could drop the new one in. It's not really new, it's used. <laughs> but I could probably drop that in and it'd probably work fine. But I figure it's better to keep as much original as possible and just replace the fan itself. Now, if you buy it new, you probably have like a, a better um, peace of mind, you know, for warranty and things like that. But the, the used one that I got comes with like a 90-day warranty on it. 
So, uh, you know, I could have probably gotten a brand new one for just like 10, 20 bucks more. But it was an issue of I want to fix this now and I didn't feel like ordering it. It was kind of a hassle to order it, um, you know, when you don't have like a really permanent address and picking it up and coordinating all that is a pain. So I went ahead and picked it up from the scrapyard. So we're going to go ahead and remove this just by um, unscrewing this here. So I'm just basically going to unscrew each of these and then um, remove the unit and show you what it looks like. So we'll do that and, and um, follow up here in a moment. Hey, just an FYI, these things are a pain to get out, but you kind of need to unscrew all of them so that they all come out, all three of them. And sometimes it kind of gets caught up in that thing, just sort of tilt this and whatnot to get it out. And it looks like something else is still holding it. So I think the center, the center is still holding it together. So I'm going to have to unscrew that as well. So it's not just those three bolts holding it. The center is holding this too. So I've got to take the center out. All right, the center nut that's holding everything in place right here appears to be like eight millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and use it out with an eight millimeter socket. Kind of hard to film and, and show you, so we're not going to have any action shots. All right, so I removed this, this washer from here, but it's still stuck on here. So there's still something holding it in place. And I'm not going to mess with it at this point. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take the, um, the one that was salvaged and install this back in. And it's already done. I wanted to keep the original casing and all that um, just to keep it original as much as possible. But I don't want to mess with this. Um, I took this out. I took it apart. It didn't want to come out. So at this point right now, we're not going to bother. So if you were going to do this and you didn't want to replace the fan itself, um, you don't even need to undo those three bolts. You know, you could just, I could have just taken the unit out, swapped it in and been done within a few minutes, which might be better. <laughs> Undoing all this stuff and then having to deal with this. It looks like this has got some kind of special tool that pulls this metal part out and then the, the fan comes up and then you can pull the motor, you know, through because right now it's locked. So that was just a waste of 10, 15 minutes right there. But we're going to go ahead and install the, uh, the salvaged one and see how it all works. So I've got the salvage one here, and interestingly, the center bolt isn't even the same. You can see it's bigger than the other one, but I just noticed that when you go and you put it back in, there is a little ledge right here and one on the other side, and these things have a little ledge on the bottom. So you want to make sure you hook it up onto the little, you know, when you slide it in, you want to hang it through that ledge. Otherwise, it probably won't shut correctly and your fan will be loose. So, probably better to replace the whole assembly than to try to do the, um, the fan blade. Alright, once you have the, the little plastic lip thingy caught onto that little latch on each side, it actually lines up perfectly. And you can see the hole here is where the, the bolt will go in. So I'm going to bolt it all back in, hook everything back up. I wonder if this, this will reach or not. We'll try it and see if it reaches. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take it back out and replace it with uh, another hose. All right, pulling on it a little bit allowed me to stretch it. It was a little short, but I pulled on it. So looks like it's not ripped anywhere, but I, I kind of pulled on it to stretch it a little bit. It's rubber, so it kind of has a little bit of play. So it's able to reach now. And how this thing overflows is the cap here. See, it's got a little vent thingy, but then it just spills all over the place. So the other one, you know, it actually physically comes out. And I can't put the other one on because it turns out the caps are slightly different sizes. So this may have come off a Toyota instead of a Pontiac Vibe. They're essentially the same car, but they might have swapped out some parts or it's not the exact same year, but close enough. So we're just going to use this current one, you know, the one that came with it. Yeah, this has got Japanese writing on it, so it's probably from a Toyota. Because the Vibe is actually like a Toyota, Ma a Toyota Matrix. Alright, once you got the uh, the bolt in there, it took a little while to thread it through, but... It's just a matter of tightening it up and um, hooking everything back up. So it's pretty tight now on here. Uh, those I'm going to reinstall into the, the junk one, which I don't know. I may keep a little bit longer until I'm sure this is good and then um, toss it. I'll need to keep junk. But now 
I need to hook up the um, the wire here, the connector, but also these these little thingies here that go in the clips, see the little clips to hold it in place. So one goes right there, if you can see that, and the other one goes right over here, and this guy goes here. But we're gonna hook it in and see how it does. All right, so it clicked in, it locked, and um, and I push that in and lock that in place. I don't know if you can see that. I just pushed it in on this side too. I'm just going to put it into the hole. Clip it in. I don't know if it needs to turn or anything. I wonder if it has to turn or something. Hmm. It doesn't seem to want to lock. So let me look here and see what's going on. It's going in but not locking. So I don't know if it needs to turn. I'm not too worried about it. I don't think it's going to get cut or anything like that. This one locked it into place so as far as I know that's it um now the thing is to test it I need the car to actually drive and heat up <laughs> and see if the fan actually comes on or if the, the vehicle overheats so I want you to test it right now but um I'll be able to test it when you know I stop I might do some stop and go and see if it um the fan comes on because if it doesn't it'll overheat like it normally does so be easy to find out um they did supposedly at the the auto salvage test the, the fan. You know, they supposedly pull it and test it before they sell it to you. So, we'll see how that goes. But I do have a three-month warranty on it. I'm going to go ahead and um, just put those um, bolts back onto the, uh, the one I removed. And then call it a day. Hopefully, you found this video useful. Hopefully, this is a repair that actually worked. <laughs> Total cost was like under $40. So, until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. Please stay safe. Bye-bye now.